In this presentation I'm going to run through how to analyse an ECG signal and an ECG signal is basically a signal that is a measure of the electrical activity of your heart and a lot of people would have seen this type of signal either in hospital or on TV. It's a very common signal that people would have seen at some stage in their lives. And what I'm going to do in this presentation is show you how to um, determine the average heart rate of an ECG signal uh, in MATLAB. Now, to do that, I'm going to use some data that I obtained from a website called visionet.org. I've also made the, the data available on this website, so it's easy to access. Now, to bring it into MATLAB, I need to basically copy it. And the handiest thing to do is to paste it into a notepad or some text editor. Now, I need to save that file in the present working directory of MATLAB so I can get that by typing PWD at the command line so I need to paste it into that directory or sorry save the file in that directory so I'm going to save it as save it in that folder so let's just go to my documents Dropbox uh, copy it to my MATLAB folder and I'll save it as ecg.txt okay um, so now when I type ls which lists the contents of the directory I should be able to see that file and there it is okay so that file is available to me now to load in now I'll just clear the screen typing CLC and I'm going to read the data in by typing sig equals load ecg dot txt uh, so I'll plot the signal now it's the easiest way for us to visualize that it's signal and there we go that's the ECG signal that I've loaded in. Um, this horizontal axis shows me the samples, so I've 6,000 samples. Now the data was captured at 100 Hertz, so 100 samples every sec second. Now I got that information from the visionet.org website. Um, so that's this axis shows me 6,000 samples, which is, equates to 60 seconds of data. Um, and this axis here would be electrical activity. So I might just label that graph. So X label um, just say samples and Y label of electrical activity and I'll give it a title. Let's see this Y label. Okay. I'll give it a title of ECG signal sampled at 100 Hertz. Okay, so now I have a, a nice looking figure that's well labeled and it'd be nice to put that into a report or up on a website if you want to reuse it. Uh, to do that you can just export the figure so file export and there's various file formats. EMF is very useful for Word documents whereas JPEG is useful for websites. So you can reuse those figures. Um, very useful thing to be able to do. Now what I need to do is really um, work out how to analyze this ECG signal. Uh, and I'm going to zoom in a little bit just to point out a few details about the ECG signal. Um, basically you'll see that it's it's kind of periodic. There's a repeating sort of waveform there. It's not uh, perfectly periodic but it, you can see repeating parts to the signal. And basically each of these repeating waveforms is produced every time the heart beats. So a very com common thing in signal analysis is to try to identify key features. In this case there's some very prominent key features. For example this large spike here is a very prominent feature that we can use. So every heartbeat contains this large burst of energy or spike of electrical activity. Um, well, these there's also these features here. There's there's a, a, a sp negative spikes if you want to call them that, or negative peaks. Um, but there's lots of features. But the most prominent one to me is this large spike. Um, they all seem to be all over the value a, a value of one. And I might just zoom out to confirm that. So all those spikes seem to be greater than one. So that's a very easy feature to pick out. So I'm going to write some code to try and find these prominent peaks. And basically a prominent peak um, 
will be something that uh, uh, a, a, a peak that is greater than one as opposed to these peaks here which are all less than one. So um, let's try to work out how we'll actually try to find a peak uh, and to do that I might just show the individual samples of this signal and to do that I'm going to use the hold on command I'm going to plot sig in red zeros so that I can see the individual samples um, there we go so now I've just shown the individual samples as well so we can see here this is a peak here uh, and this is really what I want to be able to identify this peak up here um, now there are other peaks like this here could be described as a peak but it's less than one so I want to find these peaks that are greater than one now a peak I'm going to define to be a sample which is greater than its two nearest neighbors so in this case sample this sample here is greater than the sample to the left and the sample to the right so it's a peak whereas if we looked at this sample here just close that down if we looked at this sample here the sample to the right and the sample to the left are are not it's it's not greater than both of these so it's not defined to be a peak so what I'm trying to do is come up with a, a, a mathematical rule that I can use to identify peaks because I can use MATLAB to run through all of these samples so I can analyze each sample and see which which samples are greater than their two nearest neighbors okay so let's take another example um, I'll zoom in here So this sample here would be greater than its two nearest neighbors, but I also want to find out which sample is great, uh, sample that's greater than two nearest neighbors and also greater than one. So that's the rule I'm going to use to identify these. So now I need to write a little piece of code to do that, and I'm going to use a MATLAB editor. So I'll type edit to open up my MATLAB editor, and I'll start to write the code. Uh, I'll just make a note on the program. Oops need a second to do this. Okay, sorry about that. Um, I'll write some code. So this is a program to uh, determine the BPM of an ECG signal. Okay. Um, now, whenever I'm writing a piece of code, I'll normally write it out in text first of all. So the first thing I want to do is count the peaks, the, well, we call them dominant peaks or prominent peaks, whatever you want to call them, dominant peaks in the signal. These correspond to heartbeats. Okay. Um, I'll make a note as well. Peaks are defined to be samples greater than their two nearest neighbors and greater than one. Okay. Uh, once I've got that, uh, I can divide. If I divide the, the number of beats by the duration, I'll get the BPM. Divide the um, beats counted by the signal duration. In minutes. And that'll give me the BPM. Um, now, so the first thing I need to do is really identify the peaks. And to do that, I'm going to go through each sample of the signal. And I can do that using uh, a for loop. 4k equal to 1, up to the length of the signal. So I'm going to go through each of the samples. And for each sample, so the first sample will be uh, sample number 1. The first time through this for loop, k will be equal to 1. So what I'm going to look for is if sig sorry sig k which is the current sample I'm looking at so the first time through the loop k is going to be 1 so I'm going to look at sig 1 which is sample number 1 if that's greater than sig k minus 1 
and the current sample, sig k, is greater than sig k plus 1 and sig k, the current sample, is greater than 1, then I found a, a peak. So I might just say display a message just to test my system first of all. Display a message to say uh, prominent peak found. Okay. And I'll also display the, the, the sample number. Okay. So that's the first piece of code that I'm going to write. I'm going to save that. I call it BPM or BP, beats per minute. Now I'm probably going to get a, an error. I can see problems with this code, but I'll run through the, the code and just show you the types of errors that you get. So I'll run that code. And the first error I get, I get an index into matrix is negative zero. And the reason I get that message is, uh, it says it's on line number eight there. So uh, the reason I get that message is uh, MATLAB doesn't like references to, of indexes of zero. Now the first time I go through this loop, the value of k will be one which means this value here will be k minus 1, which is 0. And sig 0 doesn't exist, so that's why I'm going to get that error. Now I can solve that problem pretty quickly by just making sig, by starting the index at 2. Now let's run that code. Now we can see that the code in the background was working quite well, except I got an error at the very end. Um, uh, towards the end of the signal, I, I ran into another error, and this time it was because if I look in my code, the last time through the loop, the last value k will be 6000, because the length of my signal is 6000. And inside here, I'm looking at a, a sample which is, well, if k is 6000, um, this, this will be 6001. And sample number 6001 doesn't exist, so that's why I get this error. So I can resolve that problem by going from 2 up to sig minus 1. So now k will be all values between 2 and 5999. And that should resolve that issue. And let's just run that code. So now I didn't get any errors. Now I've got a list of where prominent peaks occur. I'm just going to check my figure to make sure that those values uh, are accurate. I'll just do it for a couple of them. So we'll look at, for example, at sample number 4001. So let's zoom out there and zoom in on sample number 4001 and see whether this work code worked correctly. So sample number 4001 is this value here. Is it greater than 1? Yes it is. Is it greater than its two nearest neighbours? Yes it is. So that looks like that's working well. Uh, let's look at 4089. Well, Actually maybe scroll up a little bit. Um, we we'll go to 3383. So let's go to 3383. Somewhere around there somewhere, 3000. I read that correctly, 3,383. There's 3,380, and there's 3,000, there we go. Okay, so that sample is again greater than 1, and it's greater than 2 the nearest neighbour. So, um, the system seems to be working quite well um, in identifying the peaks. What I need to do now is um, keep track of a count. So I'm going to create a new variable called beat count equals beat count plus one. So I'll add to that every time. Uh, I, this rule is true. Uh, and I'll initialize, I'll initialize beat count equal to zero. Actually, I'll show you what will happen if I don't put that in, first of all. So let's run that piece of code. You'll see that I get an error. Beat count doesn't exist because it hasn't been initialized. So I will initialize it now and we'll run through that and we'll see that it works. Now, um, 
now I have my beat count. I might comment out these two values, these two lines, sorry. And now I need to um, call that beats counted. We need to determine the duration of the signal in minutes. So we'll use a variable n to store the um, duration of the signal, length sig. And we'll say the duration in seconds will be equal to n um, divided by fs. And we just need to define fs to be like, it's a variable I use for sampling rate. So fs equals 100 hertz. Okay. And the duration in minutes will be equal to duration in seconds divided by 60. Okay. So, and BPM, I'll create a variable BPM, which will be equal to the beats, beats counted. divided by duration minutes. So I think you'll see when you write code that um, with these, even though their variables are quite long, it becomes easier to read the code. So I'm just going to run that code now and see if it works. So the BPM in this case is 67. Um, now, I might just test that code a little bit more to see whether it works. So I'm just going to take a, a smaller sig sample so that I can see whether it works well. So I'll take a, a short segment of the original signal. So I'll take the first um, 500 samples. Plot. Oh, we'll turn off the hold. Plot sig. So let's see if this works properly. So one, two, three, four, five, six. I should find six beats in this signal. So if I run this code again, my beat count should be um, my beat count should be six. So let's try that. I'm just going to display the beat count just to see whether this code is actually working correctly. The beat count is six. Great. Now it's given me a different average of BPM of 72, that's because I've got less data. But there's an example anyway of how you can do some basic signal analysis on an ECG signal.